what's up? I'm Elliot Connie, and welcome to this edition of uh, SFBT Moments. And I'm sitting here in my kitchen, uh, about to bake my lunch, which is my favorite thing, just requires three ingredients. And, um, you know, I'm sitting here thinking about Solution Focus Brief Therapy. It's kind of always on my mind right now. I'm writing a couple of book chapters and some research projects, things like that, and I just never get away. And I step away to cook lunch, and thoughts continue to go through my head. And, um, you know, Without question, the, the number one thing I get asked, I don't go a week without somebody emailing me at least a couple of times about like, how do you become proficient in solution-focused brief therapy? Like, how do you master solution-focused brief therapy? And my answer is always the same. You gotta get in the kitchen. Like, I have a friend of mine who is a, a very good chef, very wonderful chef, and he always, he always says there's a difference between uh, reading and knowing a cookbook and standing in front of a stove, which is I'm in front of now. Um, it's in order to become a good chef, it's not studying and mastering cookbooks that's gonna help you become a good chef. It's spending hours upon hours upon hours in front of a stove. That's how you become a good chef. And I think Solution Focus Brief Therapy is the same. It's not really the books and the theoretical content that if you gain mastery of it, you can go do it. It's spending the time in front of clients. You know, I spent more than 10 years seeing an average of 30 clients a week, week in and week out, doing solution focused brief therapy because I know there's some, there's uh, a lot of good that comes from just standing in front of the stove and actually doing the work. And in solution focused brief therapy, if you want to master this pro approach, if you want to come become proficient in this way of working, you've got to spend time in front of clients. Now, I'm not saying the book content is not important. I mean, of course, I just, like I just said, I write books. I'm, write, I'm writing book chapters right now. But you have to take that content and go spend time with your clients over and over and over again so you gain mastery of the language that's required to do a solution-focused brief therapy because it's so much more than what's in the books. It's so different to actually build these conversations with clients and particularly clients uh, that are struggling with significant problems. People always ask me, what do you do with this client? What do you do with that client? What do you do when you're stuck? Or, what do you do if I'm stuck? Or, what do you do if their couple starts arguing? What do you do if a client starts crying? Um, and those answers come from spending the time doing the work in the, in the actual room so you have the confidence in the approach and in yourself to be helpful to people. So, how do you master solution focus brief therapy? Get in the kitchen. Now in my kitchen, let's see if I can cook. It's just about done. So here, I want you to take a look at this. Let's see if I can, if I can grab this off my camera. See there? A lot of people don't know one of my favorite hobbies is cooking. And over the years, I've gotten pretty good at cooking certain meals. If you want to get good at doing solution focus brief therapy, I got good at cooking by staying in the kitchen. And you get proficient by uh, with solution focus brief therapy by getting in the clinical room and doing the actual work. So get in the kitchen.